On today's street food, we are making Lebanese meat pies, or as I call them, lahamajin. This takes me back to my childhood. I had these way too often, and the awesome thing is, is you can put whatever you want on it. Have some fun. Lahamajin literally means meat and dough, or I guess bread, because you don't want to eat the raw dough, which we're just done. But first, the saga continues. Where's that fool, Titanium? What? Who are you? I didn't sense your presence. Carbon fiber, huh? You must be Titanium's master. Yes, I'm indeed Titanium's master. Master, huh? I'll be the judge of that. You don't stand a chance. What? How are you stopping me? This is impossible. Ah, uh, you have much to learn, young one. You don't need such things. With an RFID blocker, the ability to hold 12 cards with cash, 30-day money-back guarantee, and a lifetime warranty. Join me, young one, for Ridge Wallet's 8th anniversary and get 15% off. Yes, sensei. Hi guys, Editing Paul here, since the live video didn't come through. For this, we're going to need 330 grams worth of bread flour, just 2 grams worth of yeast because we actually don't want this to leaven too much. Next is 250 grams worth of room temperature whole milk. Since it is super cold in my house, I actually threw this at the microwave just for a few seconds. Now before I add my salt, I do like to mix this by hand just to start hydrating that flour with the yeast in there. Anytime you add salt, it can hurt the yeast immediately, so I like to make sure that I do this process first before I drop my salt on top of the yeast, potentially killing it. Once you have the shaggy mess, add your 2 grams worth of salt directly to your flour mixture, and continue to bring this together by hand, trying not to form too much gluten initially. Remember, we are trying to hydrate this before we make sure all of it's forming gluten. You want to mix this by hand until you no longer see any bits of flour at the bottom of that bowl. Once you've reached that stage, this is when you can start kneading it very, very hard in the bowl. You want to start in the bowl first, so this way it doesn't stick too much to your cutting board, but eventually we will move it over to the cutting board to give us a better working area. Continue to work this into the bowl until it is just slightly tacky but not too sticky and after about two to three minutes of mixing in the bowl and kneading by hand your dough should start to look like this where it's not fully together it still rips apart and this is when we're going to add 40 grams worth of olive oil and mix it directly on top of that dough Alternatively, you can mix this in with the rest of the ingredients, but I did watch a few Lebanese chefs use this method to incorporate their oil into their dough. This isn't a super common thing that I have seen personally, so I was really interested to try it out, and to be honest, it worked out relatively well. The olive oil does end up working itself into that dough, and eventually you get this really, really nice, shiny, beautiful dough you can work with. After the dough became workable, I started doing some slaps and folds on my cutting board, making sure that you do remove this immediately after you slap it down because if you leave the dough on the cutting board, what's going to happen is that it'll start sticking. After a full 10 minutes of kneading by hand, roll it up into a ball, grab that bowl, make sure it is nice and greased up so it doesn't stick, place your beautiful ball of dough into the center and throw a lid on it to let it rest for about 45 minutes to an hour depending on the temperature of the home, but you want it to double in size. So while this is resting, we're just going to make the topping or the filling for this pie and you can do anything you want, but we're going to keep it somewhat traditional in this regard, but feel free to change it up. Seriously, do whatever you want with this, have some fun with it. Now the first part of our filling is going to be based on tomato. This is going to keep it super moist, give it some acidic content, but also give it that really nice fresh tomato flavor. I'm also going to add in some pasilla pepper. Feel free to use green bell peppers, which is more on the traditional side, but I had some pasillas that I really wanted to use, and these are going to be a nice addition. Next is your onion of choice. I'm using red onion for this portion of it, but white onion does work really well, or some nice yellow onions. And because I want it spicy, of course I'm going to add in some chopped jalapeno to the mix. For each of your ingredients, you're going to treat them mostly the same. For the red onions, make sure you start with a small dice, and then once you have it into a small dice, which is really, really small in this regard, we still need to mince it because you don't want too many big pieces of onion. After you do that small dice, place it back onto your cutting board and just give it a good mince. You don't need to make sure it's a puree or anything, but you do want them fairly small. Place all of your onion into your bowl and move on to your pasilla pepper. If you're using green bell pepper, just treat it the same, but you want to cut these into thin slices. And then from here, you're going to start cutting them into brunoise or really, really small dice. I use around 85 grams worth of pasilla pepper along with around 85 grams worth of onion. Now for the spice, I am using that jalapeno, which I am going to cut up very, very small just like the other two ingredients, but feel free to just use some crushed chili flakes, some paprika, some cayenne pepper, really whatever spice you want if you want some spice in there. Make sure the jalapenos are small, otherwise you're going to get these really big chunks of spice that no one wants to bite into, and this is what they should look like after you've chopped them up. Throw in that entire chopped jalapeno into your bowl and then move on 
on to the tomato. Now for the tomato, you still want bits of tomato to be found throughout the meat pie, but you also want a lot of that juice to be released from the tomato. So after you dice it up, make sure you hit it back onto your cutting board and continue to essentially pulverize it on the cutting board. Make sure you don't use a sauce or turn your tomatoes into a sauce because you do want those bits of tomato to be found throughout the meat mixture. After you've cut up all of your tomatoes, slice that last piece, hit it with some salt and enjoy because they are so juicy. This is all the ingredients we need for our filling, but now we need to add our meat of choice. I'm using 80-20 ground beef, which is fairly traditional, but you can also use lamb if you have it, use chicken, use pork, use really anything you want except maybe fish, that'd be a little awkward. After you've mixed this by hand, we are going to add a touch of tomato paste. You only need a small spoonful of this because it can be very, very strong and very tart. Throw in around five to 10 grams of tomato paste, make sure it is fully combined so you don't have huge chunks of tomato paste because no one wants to bite into that. Season this very generously with salt and mix this in by hand, making sure that all that salt is fully combined. Now the next thing we need to add is baharat. Baharat is actually a Middle Eastern spice blend that can kind of be compared to garam masala. My mom had sent me this from back home and this one includes black pepper, coriander, paprika, cardamom, nutmeg, cumin, cloves, and cinnamon. Since it does have a bunch of very strong flavors, we only need around five grams worth of your baharat spice mix in this mixture. Don't go overboard with it because it can be overwhelming. Mix this with a spoon or go by hand if you want to smell like baharat for the next two days. And the overall texture and consistency needs to be somewhat spreadable. To help achieve that texture, we're adding 15 grams of olive oil and 15 grams worth of water. Mix thoroughly to make sure all of those liquids are fully combined. And if it isn't to the right consistency of a spreadable paste, hit it with just a touch more water. I added another 15 grams to my case. This is what my meat mixture starts to look like. You can see that you can somewhat spread it around in the bowl and that's really what you're looking for. This has to be able to spread like this for these meat pies. And of course, the taste test. You gotta do the taste test. What's great about doing stuff like this is that you get yourself a little snack in between your meals, you know? Perfect, Deli don't, mess don't mess with it. Don't mess with it, trust me. Oh. I'm so excited, but according to my phone, we still have like 20, 20 minutes before we can work with the dough, so I guess I'll just clean. After cleaning and the dough being ready, we are ready to work this out. On a clean cutting board with just a touch of flour, place your dough down below, and we're just going to cut this into eight equal pieces. Don't worry about measuring it out, we're just trying to have some fun with this and have some lahabajin. If you really want to measure these out, just measure them out into eight equal portions. Now once you have your dough cut, we're going to tuck the corners in, bringing them towards the bottom and pressing them towards the top. Once you do that, just give it a nice roll like you're making a dinner roll very gently and let this rest. Perform the same thing with each and every dough ball. This is going to allow you to roll it out a bit easier later instead of working with like a square or anything like that. Now on a floured surface, give this a pat down and start stretching out this dough. Make sure you do have some room to work with and start rolling it out. Now, lahamajin has to be really thin. The dough has to be super thin because it does cook very quickly on a high heat. You don't want this thick like pizza dough. You want this to be rolled out to about an eighth of an inch. Once you have your dough rolled out, grab yourself a pizza paddle just to make it easier and make sure it's floured and then lay your dough right on top of that. Each of my dough sheets came out to around eight inches in width just to give you some reference. Now grab a big old spoon full of meat and start spreading this very thinly over the dough. It has to be thin and it has to be even because it doesn't cook for very long. If you have any spots that have too much meat, they may not cook evenly and may be underdone compared to the rest of it. Once you have everything nice and spread out, this is what your lahamajin should look like, super thin. Now in a medium high heat pan, pop your dough down, throw a lid on it, and let it cook for around one minute. This is going to start steaming. Look at the steam. Look at it. It's mesmerizing. After around a minute of medium to high heat cooking, covered, check the bottom and make sure there's some color on that dough. If there is, turn it to low, pop the lid back on for another two to three minutes until the meat gets cooked. Now when I pull this out, I do like to make sure that I allow some of that liquid to spill off into the pan so it doesn't carry over on the dough. And there is our first lahamajin. Make sure you cover this with a bit of parchment to keep it moist, and then proceed on to working on the rest of your lahamajin. Now as you make these and you start to cook them, when you stack them after they're done cooking, make sure there is a sheet of parchment paper in between each one. Let them steam because no one wants them crispy. Now I like to hit mine with some sumac because it is delicious on lahamajin, but feel free to hit this with some sriracha, with chili spices, with barbecue sauce, whatever. And there it is, our beautiful Lahamajin or meat pies. There it is guys, some Lahamajin or Arabic Lebanese meat pies. These harken back to my childhood. I probably honestly had them like once or twice a week at some point. 
They're just delicious, so easy to make, and they're super cheap depending on the market you go to. I love having mine with some mock or sumac. I love adding hot sauces to this, throw a fried egg on top of it. Honestly, like this can just be the base and add whatever you want to it. Throw some salad on there, wrap it up. Oh my God, the, the possibilities are endless. Best way to eat this is you gotta, you gotta roll it up. I'm gonna, we're gonna just do one of these, okay? Oh my God, I'm so happy. Cheers. See this? See right there? See that? See that? This is the new window to your soul. It has a sliced spice to it. It's super juicy. The meat is wonderfully cooked. The bread has the nice little charring to it. It's still super soft from steaming. Everything that you would want is right here. Just like everything you would want is over at chefpk.com where you can get this recipe and a bunch of cool merch. My name is Chef PK. This is Street Food. Get subscribed. And remember, keep playing with your food. There's like seven more that I'm probably gonna eat. Oh, I'm so hungry. So good. Mmm!